Hey guys, this is Petrina and this is part two of my Simple Clock app tutorial series. If you haven't watched um, part one, you can go and check it in the descriptions below. I'm going to put a link there. Um, in this video, I am going to add a stopwatch to my Simple Clock app. I'm just going to put a disclaimer out there. I am not a professional programmer. I am just someone who's trying to teach herself how to code. Also, this video is going to be quite long, so please bear with me. Okay, let's get started. Okay, the first, if you want to see, before we go into it, if you want to see um, my clock app from before, this is what it looks like right here, a very simple clock app. Okay, now we'll just go into, yeah, we'll just get into it. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a tab panel item. And we're going to call this tab panel item stopwatch. Okay, what I don't like doing is I don't like repeating myself. So I'm going to put a class rule for the tab panel item. And I'm just going to cut the background color here and paste it here. So what the, what this does is that it applies to all of the tab panel items. So now all of the tab panel items will have the background color here, indigo. If I don't do this class rule, then I have to add it. I have to put um, background color in all of the tab panel items, and I don't want to do that. So that's why I'm using a class rule. Another thing is that I want all of my widgets to have the same font. So I'm going to put a class rule for the widget. And I'm going to put the font here. So now I don't have to uh, put the font name in every one of my widgets. So if we run it now, you'll see yeah, you'll see that they, all of the widgets have this font. And also, um, the tab panel items have the color indigo. Yeah. Okay. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put a box layout in this tab panel item. And we're going to set the orientation to vertical and then we're gonna put a label in the box layout so we're just gonna write text here and we're gonna put some numbers to represent the uh, stopwatch and now within this box layout, we are going to put another box layout. So we're going to set the orientation of this box layout to horizontal. And we're going to put the height of this box layout to 90. We're going to put the padding of this box layout to 20. Spacing of this box layout to 20. And put the radius. Oh, sorry, not the radius, but the size hint to 1 and none. Um, there's something about KB. If you don't put this uh, the size hint after the height and the padding and the spacing, it will never take these three into account, and it will just ignore them. So, if you put the size hint, then it will um, make the height 90 and the padding 20 and the spacing 20. So yeah, it's important that you add the size hint. So yeah. Okay. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, put two buttons into this box layout 
and I'm just going to put the text start and I'm going to add another button I'm going to put the text to reset okay we have to put an ID on this button so that we can access them in the Python file so the ID will be for this one it will be start stop and for this one the ID would be um, reset and for the label here the ID would be stop watch I don't know why the task is up like that. It's really annoying. Anyway, forget about that. Okay, now let's go up here and we're going to add a class rule for the button. And we're going to put the background normal. So the background normal, it's very important that you add the background normal if you want to give a color to the buttons because uh, TV by default gives a gray shade to the button. So if it's red, it's going to be some maroon type of color if you don't put the background normal. So when you put it, uh, the color comes out as red, but it removes the grayish um, shade. So yeah, just letting you know. And then I'm just going to gonna put the... Uh, Going to put the uh, going to put the background color to zero um, zero zero zero. So this is gonna be white. Um, yeah, background color has to be white because we're going to use the canvas. So the canvas works in a white background. So we're gonna use the canvas because we want our buttons to be rounded. So we're gonna use the canvas to make our buttons rounded. I mean, my buttons or my app stopwatches buttons rounded, yeah. Whew. Okay, we're gonna set the font size to 25. I like, I want it to be nice and big. Okay, now we're gonna create um, buttons that will inherit from the button widget. So the rounded button at button and we're gonna say canvas dot before gonna say color RG RGBA so I want this color to be red but this one to be red so going to say 1, 0, 0, 1, and we're going to say rounded, rectangle, and we're going to set the size to self.size, the position to self.position, and the radius to 15. Okay, now I'm just going to copy this and paste it right here. And I'm just going to add one in here. And I want the color of this button to be blue, so I'm going to set this to one. Okay, now we're just going to run it and see. There's an error. I'm gonna have to check. Yep, naming error. So Oh, 
didn't spell the horizontal correctly, so. It's okay to make mistakes. You learn from your mistakes, so yeah. Okay, so you see, um, because this one, because, because of this code right here, the tab panel item, um, class rule doesn't, um, work, doesn't work. So for that matter, I'm going to have to put it. Put this one right at the bottom. So I'm just gonna cut this right here and I'm just gonna paste it at the bottom. So now when we try and run it, I think it's gonna work. I'm pretty sure it's gonna work. So yeah, there you go. So oops. I'm just gonna set the font size of this step and item to 16. And I'm going to set the font size of the label here to 60. I want it nice and big. Okay, now we'll just run it and see. Oh, yeah, there you go. Perfect. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go into our Python file. Okay, for the Python file, first we're going to declare two variables. The first one will be stopwatch started. It will get false, the Boolean value of false. The second one, stopwatch seconds, and it will get zero. Okay, now in this function, we're going to add this line of code here. So if self dot stopwatch started, self dot stopwatch seconds plus equals tick. Okay. So this is saying that um if stopwatch started is like if it's uh, true if it's true then you add uh, the value of um, stopwatch seconds to take by the way in the clock dot schedule interval it's not always zero the value of tk will not always be zero it's zero zero point zero zero one two or something um, I can show it to you. I can show it to you. So I'm just going to say print, um, tick, and you're, you're going to see. It's not going to be zero. It's going to be um, some other number. So always, it's always going to be 0, 0.00 something. So let's just put it, sorry, I, I'm putting it in the wrong function. Let's just put it in this function. Print tick. Okay, now you will see. See, it's always some different number. So yeah, it's not exactly zero, but it's zero point zero 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 one or something like that. So it adds on every time, every second it adds on. So this one it adds on and the value goes up. So yeah. Just explaining that to you. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna declare two variables, m, which stands for minutes and seconds, s, which stands for seconds, and then we're gonna say div mode, a stopwatch seconds, and gonna say 60. So this is a shortcut, so it's like this. Um, it literally is like this, like m is equal to sw seconds divided by 60 and s is equal to sw seconds modulus operand 60. So this um, equation here is like um, 15 divided by 
two with the remainder of you get the answer and you, you forget about the answer like you divide two into 15 and you get one and then the remainder is the answer so yeah that's what I'm trying to say. The remainder of the division is the answer here. So yeah, that's the explanation, basic explanation of this. So yeah, so this is the shortcut of these two equations um, here. Okay, so the next thing is we are going to say self dot root dot ids dot stop watch that text is equal to and we're gonna say zero to D and percent zero to D same for this as well. And then we're going to do use a string formatting. So now in, in this case, this one becomes a string formatter. So it takes whatever is on this side here and it puts it on this side. So we're going to the brackets. We're going to say int. Um, M. So as, as soon as this um, division and the remainder, the answers of this equation comes up, then they are in decimal points. So we want them in our whole numbers. So we're going to change them into integers. So that's why we're using int. So int M. And then int S. And then int s times 100, 100. So for this case here, the second will, once it, it will run from 1 to 100, what, once it reaches 100, this one will go 1. So for this one, the 0 to D is like two decimal places. So, so it's like it gives two zeros. So if I write three like that, it's going to put three zeros. But I want two zeros. So that's how I'm going to put it. So for this one here, this uh, zeros here, two zeros that, that are going to be here, I want them to be a uh, smaller size. So I'm going to set the font to 40. Put this one's here. I'm just gonna this one's at the bottom. Yeah. Like that. Uh, maybe you just leave that on top. Yeah. Yeah, I'll just leave them like that. Okay. Now the next thing is we're gonna create a function. Two functions actually. So the first function will be stop start. Gonna say def stop start self, and then we're gonna set the self dot root dot ideas dot stop start. The text will be equal to start if sw started else stop. Okay. Stopwatch. So so dot so dot so we said I get not s dot so dot s w started. Okay, so now we're gonna make this 
um, the boolean value to true. We're going to set it to true. Um, once the button, the start button is pressed, it's, it becomes true. Um, so yeah, but if it becomes false, then it will, the, the text on it will change to start. But if it's true, then the text on it will change to start. So if it's, yeah. So that's it. Now we're going to create another function and we're going to name it reset. We're going to say if self dot sw started, we're going to say root dot self dot root dot ids dot reset dot text is equal to start. We're going to change um, We're going to change the button from stop to start once um, the reset button is pressed. And we're going to say self, self dot sw started now gets false. So it's going to stop the, the watch from running, the stopwatch from running. And we're going to have to reset the value of tick to zero. So we're gonna say um, um stop stopwatch seconds to zero. So we're gonna say self dot stopwatch seconds gets zero. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the function in the button. So we're gonna say on press app dot stop start and on press app dot reset and okay that's it so now uh, now let's try and run it and see so hi practice clock so now let's run it and see. Oh yeah, for this one we have to put self in front. This one here. Okay. Oh, not for font size. We're gonna have to stop this printing thing. So yeah, I, I just commented it out, so it's not gonna read it as a code. But, uh, so yeah, there you go. Oh. Looks like I have a problem. I think the ID has a problem here, so it's start stop. Oh, I read stop start. <laughs> okay, start stop. Okay, now let me see if it's going to work. Oh, so, yep, there you go. This is um, the stopwatch that we've added to our Simple Clock app. So, thank you for watching, and I'm going to see you in the next video. So, yeah.